Welcome back to Arise Prime Time. I'm Charles Enyagulu, and this is the part of the program where we dig a bit deeper behind the headlines with our guest analysts, who we invite to help us explore the stories and issues of the day. And today, we have the journalist, political affairs commentator, and Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku. And back from a long sojourn, Arise News analyst and former chairman of the editorial board of Daily Trust newspaper, Mahmoud Jaga. And I have to start with you because it is great to see you, Mahmoud. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, let, let's talk, first of all, about the issue of asset declaration. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's that time of the year yeah. when you've got new officers coming in mm -hmm. and uh, the, the Bureau is, Code of Conduct Bureau is, you know, interested in making sure that everybody knows what needs to be done. Um, how difficult is it, do you think, getting these public officers to fall in line? Well, as the chairman said, mm. the political office holders generally comply. Uh, almost nobody will become governor or commissioner or minister without feeling. Mm. The problem, I suspect, are the civil servants, because there are so many. And sometimes, uh, from my own experience, the board uh, maybe does not, the, the bureau does not properly clarify who should be, because when I was working in the New Nigerian, in Kaduna, it's a government-owned mm. uh, uh, newspaper. Forms were brought in huge quantities, and everybody in the newsroom was required to fill it, mm. and we thought that was odd. Maybe mm. that was not what the law uh, said. But I think the most important people are captured, the governors and ministers, commissioners and members of the National Assembly, mm. probably even the heads of major uh, parasitals. Those ones are uh, captured. I'm not sure whether the law expects every single public officer uh, to be uh, captured. Mm. So the problem is not even that. I think the main problem, you know, the chairman spoke very well here, but he was sticking very closely to the law. Yeah, he was. The biggest problem is that this information that public officers fill in the forms is not readily available to the public. Mm. Okay, as he explained, you might get it through the procedures of the uh, Freedom of Information Act, but it's cumbersome. Uh, because otherwise, if we don't know what uh, a person mm. declared, and we also don't know what he declared at the end of his life, you know, it's only the people close to him and those in his village and all that that will know. Mm. Because there is this allegation that uh, when political office holders are taking office, they exaggerate the quantity of their assets. They make they make a provision, mm. <laughs> so to say. Uh, if I have two houses now, I will say I have ten. So that by the time I finish, uh, if you see me with 12 houses, mm. you will not say, why did you get yes, ten? That, that's the allegation mm. uh, people are making. And the only way to deal with that, maybe, is to make the information public mm. at the beginning and at the end of the tenure. Yeah, that's a very good point. Mm. And uh, Dr. Ikoku, of mm. course, as he said, it depends on what you actually put into the form. Mm. And I imagine that quite a lot of people put in whatever they really want to put in those forms. I mean, the real issue is the capacity to investigate. Well, you're correct. Um, he did say that they have the capacity and the powers under the law Well, they have the constitutional power, yes, but whether they actually use it is another to, question. To investigate yeah. whatever is given to them when the, uh, the public officers fill the forms, mm. go out there and verify and then write a report and keep it as a document for the public officer's file. Mm. So that means at the end of their tenure of serving a particular government, they reopen the file, the document mm. is there. So my sense is that, okay, they, they, they can do that investigation and verification. But as we said again is, you have these documents, but they are not open to any other person. Mm. So how do you actually you know, check what is at variance? at the time they started office and at the end of their tenure. Mm. Anything can happen between a space of four years. You know, In fact, many things happen between a space of four years. Mm. How do you check that there is abuse of office? How do you check that integrity is intact? How do you check that you know all other things that are supposed to go with that office are not abused? So mm. I think it is important that, like you also mentioned that, um, you know, if they are, uh, if they're talking about people like the president, the vice president, 
and the National Assembly members, these are very powerful people. Are you able to go after them? We haven't heard much in the past. So we'll see what happens this time around. Yes, and of course, the, the, to, I mean, to kind of further support what you're saying, the only time we actually saw something big that went public was the Chief Justice of Nigeria at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, a, a move that many saw as illegal. Mm -hmm. But let, let's move away from that because we've got about five minutes and let's head to the National Assembly, mm -hmm. which is a place that's boiling over at the moment because of the, um, the zoning template mm -hmm. that the APC has come up with. Well, what do you make of what's going on there? Personally, I thought that uh, it is okay and in fact necessary for APC in particular that won a majority in the Senate and uh, was slightly short of a majority in the House of Representatives mm. to conduct some, some zoning of the offices because there must be all kinds of balancing. You do that for party offices, you do that for elective offices, and even for this they have to do. Where they probably went over the top mm. was after zoning particular offices to regions, they also went ahead and named particular individuals. And that is the one that is causing Absolutely. a problem. Uh -huh. If you had simply said, well, given everything about our party, we have zoned the Senate presidency to the South South yes. zone and leave it there. Okay, then all the senators in the South South zone can compete. Can with each compete other. Yeah, they will be scrambling. That makes sense. Uh -huh. Now, towards the end, you may still have to settle for one yes. uh, person because if you allow all of them yeah. to to uh -huh, but you don't have to do that. And you can do it quiet. Uh -huh. yeah. You can do it quietly yeah. and also nearly. So I thought that was what brought yeah. the, the the problem. I yes. think that's a very good point. And mm -hmm. and of course, um, Doctor Ekoku, they could end up potentially not not maybe not actually but potentially they could end up losing the leadership of the assembly to the opposition because if they unite if the opposition unites i mean they could muster the numbers they need well maybe at not least in the house of representatives yeah yeah maybe yeah, yeah. not in the senate but yeah. possibly in the house of yeah. reps because in the house, in of, the reps. house of reps yeah. um apc has 177 members yeah. and all the other parties combined have 183 members yeah. the first thing to say is that we have to remember that the national assembly or the legislature is an independent arm of government. It's supposed to be. Well, <laughs> it's supposed to be in the constitution. Mm -hmm. So that means they should be able to pick their leaders, you know, by Absolutely. themselves. Yeah. And so normally the 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 race for the leadership is usually intense. So it's it's not what is happening today is 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 not um is not uh, different. Mm. Uh, the only thing is that the blowback is really serious, especially in the House of Reps. In the, in the Senate, um, they might get away with it, but in, in the House of Reps, there are formidable members like Betara, um, Al Hassan, Ado Doguwa. Mm. They are coming together and saying that the person they have chosen, um, Tajuddin um, Abbas, right? Tajuddin Abbas. 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 Tajuddin, yeah. Yes, it doesn't have um, the popularity uh, and the kind of figure that is needed to carry the lower house. Uh, so that's going to be a problem for them. And so mm. they might get together and pick one of them and support one of them and then there's also the minorities in the national assembly as well in the in the lower house who are saying that they have the numbers they are trying to going to try to unify i do not know if that is possible because you might say all of that at the end of the day you have people that go behind try to make uh, inducements mm. and try to offer people positions you know very juicy uh, chairmanship positions and say come over to this side. So there's a lot of uh, rapprochement that is going on. Uh, I think on the day of the election there will be more alignments and realignments and, and we'll see what happens. And do you think, um, Mahmoud Jaga, that those realignments that she's talking about would make this a less disputatious National Assembly or a more disputatious? One? Well, as you know, this thing happened before, I mean, yeah. in 2015. The Eighth Assembly. Uh, exactly. Uh, Senator Bukola Saraki was elected Senate President, mm. uh, essentially with the support of the PDP minority uh, members. Mm. So these kind of things happen if the party cannot get its uh, acts together. 
Uh, and as the doctor said, this time it is even more uh, dicey for APC because they don't really have an absolute majority in the House of Representatives. It is just because the minority parties that together have a majority are seven in number, mm. which is a bit yeah. uh, large, you know, it's difficult. <laughs> difficult to, for them to come together uh, as to one. Reconcile. And yeah. of course, APC, you expect, will be working with some offering all kinds of things and say, look, can guarantee you some executive positions uh, in return. So all these kinds of things will, will happen. But uh, the way things are going, it's like we are really headed for a Ronkoros uh, leadership election in early June. Well, it'll be interesting to mm -hmm. watch and mm -hmm. see what happens. I want to thank you very much indeed. Uh, Mahmoud Jager is an Arise News analyst and former chairman of the editorial board of Daily Trust newspaper, who's back from his travels in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the Dr. Constance Cook, who is a journalist, political affairs commentator, and a Rise News analyst. Thank you very much indeed, and welcome back. Thank you.